this is AEDT 2150U Digital Technologies and Advanced Teaching Methods. This week we are discussing history of teaching about, with, and through technology. In this second video, we will discuss Web 1.0 and Web 2.0. With the birth of the Web 1.0 followed by the Web 2.0, educators discovered new, innovative, and accessible tools that could assist them in their teaching. In the second video, we will define Web 1.0 and Web 2.0 and we will discuss their affordances, what they allow users to do, and the different tools that they offer. In the third video, we will look at some examples of how these tools are used by educators and we will discuss the concept of collective intelligence. So the analysis questions for this second video are what are the main differences between the Web 1.0 and the Web 2.0? What are the different affordances of Web 2.0 sites and websites that can be used in a teaching learning perspective? What are the challenges associated to the affordances of Web 2.0 in teaching? Tim Berners-Lee invented Web 1.0 in 1989. His vision was the dream behind the Web is of a common information space in which we communicate by sharing information. Web 1.0 consisted of fairly static, one-way, and seldom updated information. A web page contained images, navigation icons, text, and menu. Its writing style was mainly impersonal, professional, and descriptive, with statements of facts. No efforts were made to link between sites and interactivity was limited to submitting forms and some dynamic applications. Web 1.0 applications were slow and the pages needed to be refreshed when new information was entered. Users of the Web 1.0 were able to view web pages and reflect on their content, but didn't have the ability to actually leave a comment directly on the web page. In other words, unless creating a personal page, Web 1.0 users were passive receivers of information. Students used the web to search for information or to visualize links sent by their teachers. In order to interact about the information, they had to open their email and send their comments through separate messages. Teachers used to accompany their students to computer labs where they gave them topics to search for. The web was considered as a very accessible database of information. Students at this stage were learning with the technology by consulting it. The Web 2.0 concept was first been suggested by Darcy Dinucci in 1999 article Fragmented Future. Dinucci, a consultant on electronic information design, claimed that the web will evolve from being static text and graphics to interactivity that will occur on computer screens car dashboards, cell phones, game machines, and even microwave ovens. In 2004, the Web 2.0 concept became popular with O'Reilly Media and Media Life, who hosted the first Web 2.0 conference. When you talk about Web 2.0, the first concept that comes to mind is collaboration. Whether using social networking sites, blogs, wiki, video sharing sites, web applications, instant messaging, mashups, and folksonomies, including tagging and social bookmarking, users not only can have access and retrieve information, but can also contribute to creating and modifying online data. Web 2.0 is characterized by an architecture of participation that encourages users to play an essential role in developing collective intelligence. Web 2.0 is interactive, clear, connected, accessible, ubiquitous, and collaborative. With the Web 2.0, Users are able to search for information through keyword search. They can connect information together. They can create and update content. They can categorize content by using tags. They can use the syndication technology such as RSS to be notified of changes and more. Users of Web 2.0 learn through the technologies provided to them instead of learning about technology, such as in programming or with technology, such as in computer-assisted instruction. Let us look at some of the main Web 2.0 sites and applications commonly used by the generation of students we have in schools. 
Social networking sites allow multimedia content sharing, like pictures, videos, and music files, which enables more channels of communication. Blogs or web blogs are discussion or information sites published online by one or more authors. They consist of entries or posts displayed in a reverse chronological order. Blogs are interactive. They may allow visitors to leave comments. They may be linked to other blogs or social network sites and generate messages and RSS feeds to inform readers about updates. Blogs can be personal, corporate or organizational or focusing on a particular subject or topic. Blogs may be specific to a media type, for example, vlogs are video blogs, podcasts are audio blogs, photo blogs are photographs blogs. A wiki is a great collaboration tool. It is a website that allows a mass of users to collaborate in creating its content. A wiki can be private, closed, or open to the public. Wiki users and visitors can add, edit, or even delete content from a wiki page. Video sharing websites such as YouTube, VideoEgg, Google Video are communication tools that allow their users to upload, share, and view videos with user-generated content. Instant messaging is a synchronous form of communication between two or more people using a specialized internet application. In addition to sending instant messages, IM providers such as Yahoo Messenger, Google Talk, and other allow chatting, sharing links, sending and viewing video files and images, sharing text and audio files, talk using the internet instead of the phone line, and broadcast to all its users' contact lists. Mashups are websites that aggregate and reuse the data coming from different sources. Individual content is combined to, to result in a blended document. Porters are old versions of mashups. Folksonomies, also known as collaborative tagging, social classification, social indexing, and social tagging, is a collaborative classification system used to annotate and categorize digital content. Examples of tagging systems are Delicious, which is a social bookmarking site, and Flickr, a photo publishing and sharing site. The synthesis questions for this video are Assuming that wikis are successful and efficient collaborative tools, what are the steps to be taken and what behaviors must be adopted by wiki users in order to guarantee a successful wiki project? What are the barriers that wiki users need to overcome when collaborating on a wiki page? Which technology, named earlier, do you think can be more easily used in a teaching learning perspective? What are the benefits of using Web 2.0 tools in the classrooms with students who are already engaged in Web 2.0 sites and applications in their everyday life?